Eagles fan, so I'm going to... You want to talk about that, Steve? No? <laughs> Hey, Cubs are finished. That's all right. Right, they're already throwing in the towel. Already throwing in the towel. Can I bring up with, we were talking quarterbacks earlier, there's one guy that I've been seeing for a while, if anyone would listen. Matt Castle is having a rough camp, to say the least. And I've been reading where, in fact, Brody Croyle has given him a run for his money at number one. Now, I don't believe for a minute Castle's going to be second on the depth chart. But who's he got to throw he to? Too much. He's got. Uh, I mean, he come from a system that was set up to where I could have been successful. <laughs> and I mean, he doesn't have Randy Moss. He doesn't have Wes Welker anymore. He's got Bo, He's who got right now is, that is it. Bo is in the doghouse right now. And besides that, Bo is it. He's got no tight end anymore. No Gonzalez. Uh, on the other side of the field, they've got uh, uh, Monty Toomer and Mark uh, Bradley and a bunch of other guys who are basically the same type of wide receiver. I just old. don't see where Castle, yeah, old and slow, no separation <laughs> ability. I just don't see where Castle, why all this love for Castle this year, I don't see it. He's just not going to be that successful. Right, and well, it's, it's about the system, too. You sure. Know, in New England, he was just running the system. He was basically doing whatever Tom Brady was supposed to do until he got hurt. And so Castle went in there, threw the ball around as much as he could, and was successful. And it's just it's not going to be the same in Kansas City. Not we have another close. phone call. 529-1450 is the phone number. Good afternoon. What's on your mind? You're on the press box. Go ahead. Hey, I was wondering to know what your opinion was of the running back situation with the Jets in terms of uh, Washington and uh, Jones, who, who likely is going to emerge as the, as the stud on that backfield. It's a good question. We were talking about that before the show started, Eric. Yes, we were. Uh, and I don't know that we ever came to a conclusion. <laughs> Just uh, You know, Thomas Jones is old, and he's coming off of a career season where he posted career highs in nearly every category. Um and he should figure to be the number one officially on paper, but I don't look for him to have another big year like that. I would actually take Leon Washington ahead of Thomas Jones. Uh, he catches a lot of balls, and he can just he can score from anywhere on the field. And I think I think that towards the end of the season, I think the Jets are going to be leaning on Leon Washington quite a bit more. And uh, Mark, you brought up it, Sean Green. I think Sean Green's going to play steal a few touches. I think so because I don't count on Thomas Jones having, like you said, Eric. I don't think he's going to have the same type of year. I think he's going to have a downturn in his production, and I think Washington and Green will be valuable. And here's another problem: the Jets have a quarterbacking situation that they even either going to have a rookie in Sanchez or Clemens. That doesn't do a whole lot for me. And who they have the ball to throw to? Cotchery. Cotchery is the number one guy on their team, and quite honestly, Cotchery shouldn't be a number one guy on anyone's team. He's a good possession guy. He's not a burner, and and he's not going to stretch the field. And defenses are going to be allowed to just essentially stack the box against the Jets, and it's going to be tough. It's going to be a tough year running the ball, I think, in New York. I that's just kind of my feeling on it. I would stay away from any of those guys. Uh, maybe is like a, a your third running back. You know, a yeah. flex option on a bye week, something like that. I wouldn't just draft any of those guys and put any stock into what they're going to do for you. Yeah, I don't think either one's a starter, but Leon Washington, I think, by the end of the year, yeah. could be a, could be a starter. Yeah, he might get elevated for sure. You, you brought up a rookie in Sanchez in New York, Mark. Uh, what about some other rookies that could have a, a fantasy impact? Uh, Matt Stafford in Detroit. I don't know if anyone wants to go out on that limb. Uh, Pat White might get some touches in Miami, but more more specifically, the wide receivers are going to have more of an impact. I think you can uh, look at a Percy Harvin in Minnesota, especially now with uh, Favre there, Macklin in Philly, uh, Crabtree to the Niners, and uh, Hayward Bay to Oakland. Those guys all could get the football this year and might be worth drafting late in your fantasy draft. Now, real, I, I want you you mentioned Stafford. I got to go back to him for just a minute, sure. Adam. Quite honestly, you know what? He's not in a bad situation. You've got uh, Calvin Johnson to throw to, Pettigrew, uh, the the young tight end, uh, Kevin Smith out of the backfield. Uh, I tell you what, I can see that team, and especially Stafford, putting up some fairly decent numbers. I, mean, I wouldn't want him to start for my fantasy team, right. but I think that uh, he's got a chance to be successful on that team. Uh, there's never been a rookie quarterback that has really been worth plugging in as your starting quarterback in fantasy. Even Matt Ryan last year only finished with what? 20 touchdowns, 21 touchdowns. That's hardly elite status. So uh, you really don't want to just plug in a rookie quarterback ever. And Matt Stafford, from what I've read, is actually coming close to overtaking the starting job and might even be the starter week one. But it still doesn't mean that uh, that he's going to bring you any you know any luck in your fantasy league. Plus, he's got to play the Bears twice and the Vikings twice. I mean, that's tough. Yeah, that's not going to be an easy schedule for him being a rookie. <laughs> you know, this is why that you've got to separate 
in football, the fantasy aspect of it, and just regular football. And a lot of people have a hard time doing that. They look at, Pat, uh, at, at Ryan last year and saw, wow, Ryan had just a great job. Yeah, he did. But fantasy numbers-wise, no. And who, who do we always talk about for the you know, years gone by? Aikman. Aikman was a wonderful quarterback for the Cowboys. Fantasy-wise, stink a -rooney. An excellent pitchman for Stetson Collette. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> It's the Fantasy Football 101 preview show here at Sammy's on a Thursday afternoon. We're going to go to a break. We'll be back and take your calls here for the rest of the hour. More Fantasy Football talk, though, of course, after the 5 o'clock hour. We've got plenty to talk about. We'll be back with more after these messages here on Sports Radio 1450. I'm Jim.